Hey, SGPC family. Welcome to our Father's Day special. This Father's Day, we want to greet and celebrate the wonderful fathers, old and new, within our church family. We think of not only the biological fathers in our midst, but the adoptive, the spiritual, those who have given care as fatherly figures in our lives. We want to also acknowledge those of you who may be mourning the loss of a father and our fathers who may be mourning the loss of a child. May this be a time of remembering and a time of finding comfort in the presence of the Lord. And for those of you with complicated relationships or pasts with your fathers, we pray for healing, restoration, and comfort in our Heavenly Father, whose love and faithfulness is everlasting. We know this can be a heavy day for some. Know that we are thinking and praying for those of you who may be struggling today. For today's special, we will be hearing from Calvin High, one of our church elders who faithfully serves our church in so many ways. We hope that as he shares about how God has shaped and led him through being a father and now grandfather, that you find encouragement this Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Hi, I'm Calvin High, and I'm a member of the leadership team at San Gabriel Presbyterian Church. And I would like to share with you my journey as a father. As I was growing up as a child in South Central Los Angeles, I didn't get to know my father very well. He owned a Chinese market, and he spent many, many hours down there each day. And so I never really got to know him that well. And that even as a teenager, uh, things had not changed until my sophomore year in high school. And that was when my father passed away. So life then seemed to be very daunting and seemed very uncertain for the future. But because I had become very active in the local church's uh, boys club, as well as in the high school group, I came to give my life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and learned for the first time that I also had a heavenly father and what a profound discovery that was. So through the church and through Bible studies at church, I learned that my heavenly father was unique and special and had promised to give me help and also guidance for decisions in going to college, uh, for work, for marriage, and eventually as a father. And when my daughter and son came along later on, I needed my Heavenly Father very much to give me counsel and help and wisdom on how to discipline and counsel my own son and daughter, who were Greg and Sherry. Finding resources to be a Christian parent was not easy in the 1970s. However, that was when Focus on the Family came along, and their resources were helpful. And we started also a young family group at our church for support and for help. And we, being as a family, we started going, attending the Forest Home Christian Summer uh, Camp. And one of the guiding principles that I learned from the Forest Home Family Camp came from Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 and 7. And they read, These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So Priscilla and I began to have family devotions with our children each week. We worked hard and looking for sound, good ideas to teach God's Word that was fun, practical, and helpful. 
And we played games with them. And we did crafts with them. We drew with them. We drew stories and painted pictures with them. And we cooked uh, different things with them. And we made s'mores uh, in our fireplace with them. And we role played, role played uh, different stories uh, from the Bible. So the kids really look forward to this each week. And they wanted that fun time of activity. And we also wanted them to know that that it's God who has given that to us, given us the fun time, and that the Christian life is uh, not boring. And all through our, the children's early childhood, one of our goals was to pray with each child and to teach them that they were someone who is greater than any one of us, that there was a Heavenly Father who loved us and gave forgiveness and cared for us in everything in our life. And so we, we knew, wanted them to know that our Heavenly Father also cared about our activities, the sports that we played, the friends that we had at school or at church, and also the, uh, that the Lord, that God, the Heavenly Father, was interested in who we, when we did special things in her life, like even going or who to uh, take to the school prom. So in thinking about uh, being a father after 40 years, I know that our children are still under the guidance and help of our Heavenly Father. So, and even in spite of our feeble prayers, and our human weaknesses. God has been truly gracious to us and has blessed our family with two wonderful Christ-loving and committed Christian young adults, Christian adults, and with the two wonderful spouses for them. And today I have to add our grandson, Elliot, to the family mix for our prayer time. So even if I did all the right things, as a Christian father, I have no guarantee, you know, of their future. But that belongs to God. But my responsibility as a father is to be faithful to God's word and to follow him. And that has always been our prayer, to submit our children and grandchild from birth to adulthood unto the Lord's care and his will. It is hard for me to let go of dreams and hopes that I have, you know, for my children. My dilemma is to is how to hold them securely in the Lord before the Lord and to finally release finally release them to his care and to his will. So these are some of the things that I've learned as a father on this journey. I hope they've been helpful to you. May God bless all the fathers and grandfathers who are looking on today. Thank you. <music>